Hey there. This vid is to address a couple of queries that have come up in relation to our video on Psych Type and Love. There seems to be some confusion about the research we've put forward, that psychological compatibility is most at ease between shared perception functions. So firstly, I want to emphasise that anyone can have a good relationship and that any type can get along with any other type, but ease of interaction is the key. The Psych Type and Love video explains the patterns in partnership that we've found from our research. This doesn't mean that people with very different psych types can't have successful relationships. It's a question of how easy or challenging this will be and how much compromise each party is willing and able to make. By way of example, I know of successful relationships between ESFJ and INTJ, psychological opposites, INTP with INTJ, no shared functions, ISTP with ESFJ, shared judgment only, INFJ with ENFP, again, no shared functions. Any combination can work and can provide the opportunity for a whole heap of growth on both sides. But relationships between very different types involve a high degree of compromise because the value systems of the two parties are just so different. This means that if we're very attached to our values, our ability to bridge the gap and really honour the needs of our partner is limited. But if both parties are sufficiently mature or detached, a Buddhist term that is also very relevant to type, we can be more accommodating of our partner and have the humility to learn a great deal from them. I'll come back to this in a second, but let me first elaborate on the original video. The reason that shared perception functions work well is to do with the fact that these are, as Jung noted, irrational. Our judgment functions are rational, which means we have some level of conscious control over them. Remember that perception is how we absorb information and judgment is how we process or value that information. Perception being irrational means that we really can't control what information we absorb. So if you and your partner have different perception functions, the information you absorb will be quite different. It's a bit like that famous image in which some people see an old lady while others see a young lady. Even with shared judgment functions, the rational functions that we have some control over, it can be difficult to reach consensus on what to do with the information presented if we can't even agree on what that information is in the first place. Let me use the example of an INFP-INTJ relationship that I've observed. These guys have shared judgment, that is the same rational functions, extroverted thinking and introverted feeling, with different irrational or perception functions. The INFP uses NE and SI, while the INTJ uses NI and SE. This means that the INFP registers new information against their sense of SI precedent. That is, new information is compared with their own previous personal experience, from which their extroverted intuition, NE, extrapolates an almost limitless number of possible meanings. The INTJ, on the other hand, registers new information as prima facie SE, sheer sensory reality in the moment and internally coalesces disparate bits of this SE information into a clarified vision or understanding of the big picture. In this relationship then, despite the shared judgment functions, the INFP gets frustrated with the INTJ's NI because it has no precedent. You can't prove NI, and for those with SI, the idea of knowing something without it being a documentable fact is disconcerting and frustratingly opaque. On the other hand, the INTJ gets frustrated with the INFP's endless NE possibilities because the INTJ is always trying to hone in on the most distilled, clarified essence and the NE possibilities are disconcertingly ephemeral, as if nothing is real and everything can be endlessly reinterpreted. For example, the INFP says, well, we could go see a movie, we could go get an ice cream, we could go to the art gallery, we could go have a beer, while the INTJ asks, but what are we actually going to do? Neither party is right or wrong. They just have different perspectives, which mean that reaching consensus, which is a necessary part of relationship, requires a level of maturity and compromise. And as we noted in the first vid, this is about how much you need to be right. Your psych type reflects a set of values that you were born with. For me as an INTJ, one of my core values is the need for intellectual autonomy. So when that value is challenged or compromised, my first urge is to prosecute my case, which is what I mean by needing to be right. But as we get older, we start to recognise that in any situation, there are a hundred other factors that we may not be aware of. 
Things may not be as cut and dried as they seem to us at the time, and if we need to be right in that moment, it may cost us our partnership. When we succumb to the urge to arc up and hammer our values home, all of us, regardless of type, become rigid and dogmatic, which isn't a great way to keep friends or lovers. But when we can keep calm, maintain connection with the other person, remain flexible and, and keep challenging our own underlying assumptions rather than needing to be right, then we can enjoy all sorts of different relationships and the learning that accompanies them. So in summary, all relationships provide life lessons, but like other life lessons, not all of them are pleasant. This will depend on one, your degree of attachment to your own values, and two, what level of independence and interdependence you need both personally and from your partner. Whatever relationship you choose, the greatest investment you can make toward its long-term success is to really know yourself and know your partner. With this knowledge, we can overcome just about every difficulty. But to be ignorant of your own biases and prejudices is to provide the platform for projection upon everyone else. Part of my practice as a psych type practitioner is to chat with people to confirm their true psych type and to explain to them what other people may see that they themselves are perhaps ignorant of and how they can get the best out of their relationships. Thanks everyone for the questions and comments. Keep them coming. Bye for now.